There are places in and around our great cities where the natural world has all but disappeared. You can make out streets and sidewalks, autos, parking garages, advertising billboards, monuments of glass and steel, but not a tree or a blade of grass or any animal besides, of course, the humans. There are lots of humans. Only when you look straight up through the skyscraper canyons can you make out a star or a patch of blue. Reminders of what was there long before humans came to be. It's not hard going to work every day in such a place to be impressed with ourselves. How we've transformed the earth for our benefit and convenience. But a few hundred miles up or down, there are no humans. Our impact on the universe is nil. In the last 10,000 years, an instant in our long history, we've abandoned the nomadic life. We've domesticated the plants and animals. Why chase the food when you can make it come to you? For all its material advantages, the sedentary life has left us edgy, unfulfilled. Even after 400 generations in villages and cities, we haven't forgotten. There are now people on every continent and the remotest islands, from pole to pole, from Mount Everest to the Dead Sea, on the ocean bottoms, and even, occasionally, in residence 200 miles up. Humans, like the gods of old, living in the sky. These days, there seems to be nowhere left to explore. Victims of their very success, the explorers now pretty much stay home. Maybe it's a little early. Maybe the time is not quite yet. But those are the worlds promising untold opportunities beckon. Just now, there are a great many matters that are pressing in on us that compete for the money it takes to send people to other worlds. Should we solve those problems first, or are they a reason for going? Our planet and our solar system are surrounded by a new world ocean, the depths of space. It is no more impassable than the last. <laughs>